October 31st, 1900, Volume 4. The Celestial Mother Helps Louisa to Disarm Justice. The most salutary and efficacious medicine in the saddest encounters of life is resignation. As I was in my usual state, I felt myself outside of myself, and I found the Queen Mama. As she saw me, she began to speak about justice and how it is about to clash with all its fury against the people. She said many things about this, but I don't have the words to express them. In the meantime, I could see the whole of heaven filled with points of swords against the world. Then she added, My daughter, you have disarmed divine justice many times contenting yourself with receiving its blows upon yourself. Now that you see it at the summit of its fury, do not lose heart, but be courageous. With heart full of holy fortitude, enter into this justice and disarm it. Do not be afraid of the swords, of the fire, or of anything you may encounter. In order to obtain the intent, if you see yourself wounded, beaten, burned, rejected, do not draw back, but rather let this be spur for you to move on. See, so that you may do this, I myself have come to your help by bringing you a garment. As your soul wears it, you will acquire courage and fortitude so as to fear nothing. Having said this, from within her mantle, she pulled out a garment woven with gold, streaked with various colors, and she clothed my soul. Then she gave me her son, telling me, And now, as a pledge of my love, I place my dearest son in your custody, that you may keep him, love him, and content him in everything. Try to act in my stead, so that as he finds all his contentment in you, the discontent that all the others give him, may not cause him too much pain. Who can say how happy and strengthened I was, clothed with that garment and with the loving pledge in my arms? Greater happiness I could certainly not desire. Then the Queen Mama disappeared, and I remained with my sweet Jesus. We went round the earth a little bit, and among the many encounters, we met a soul who was prey to despair. Having compassion for her, we drew near her, and Jesus wanted me to speak to her, to make her comprehend the evil she was doing. Through a light which Jesus himself infused in me, I said to her, The most salutary and efficacious medicine in the saddest encounters of life is resignation. By despairing, instead of taking the medicine, you are taking the poison with which to kill your soul. Don't you know that the most appropriate remedy for all evils, the main thing that renders us noble, divinizes us, makes us similar to our Lord, and has the virtue of converting the very bitternesses into sweetness, is resignation? What was the life of Jesus upon earth? if not continuing the will of the Father. And while he was on earth, he was united with the Father in heaven. The same for a resigned soul. While living on earth, her heart and will are united with God in heaven. Can there be anything more dear and desirable than this? As those stirred, that soul began to calm herself. And Jesus and I, together, withdrew. May everything be for the glory of God, and may he be always blessed. October 31st, 1906, Volume 7 How for each suffering the soul acquires one more kingdom within herself. Continuing in my usual state, Blessed Jesus came in passing and told me only this. My daughter, each suffering that the soul suffers is one more dominion that she acquires over herself. 
In fact, patience in suffering is regime, and by ruling herself, the more she suffers, the more dominion she acquires. She does nothing but expand and enlarge her kingdom of heaven, acquiring immense riches for eternal life. So, for each additional pain you suffer, consider that you acquire one more kingdom in your soul, a kingdom of grace, which corresponds to a kingdom of virtue and of glory. October 31st, 1937, Volume 35 How an act of divine will contains such power and love that if God didn't make a miracle, the creature would not be able to contain this infinite act. The Passport My poor mind continues to cross the sea of the divine volition. It seems to me that it wants to say always new things about what it is able to do and wants to do within the creature in whom it reigns. And since my sweet Jesus takes great delight in speaking about his will, as soon as he sees a creature disposed to listen to his story, he assumes the primary role of narrator in order to make it known and loved. Therefore, repeating his little visit, he told me, my daughter, if I wanted to speak to you always about my fiat, I would have always new things to tell you, because its story is eternal. It never ends, either in what it is itself, or in what it can do in the creature. You must know that one act of my will in the creature contains such power, grace, love, and sanctity that if my will did not operate a prodigy, the creature would not be able to contain it, because it is an infinite act, and what is limited cannot embrace it all. Listen to where my love reaches. As the creature disposes herself, calling my will in her act, my divine will operates. In operating it calls its infinity, its eternal love, its power, imposes itself over all, its immensity which calls and embraces everyone and everything. Nobody can be put aside in its operation. Then once it has enclosed all, my will forms its work. See then what an act in my will is, an infinite act, eternal, armed with divine power, immense, so that nobody can say I wasn't there in that act. These acts cannot be without producing a great divine glory for our Supreme Majesty, as well as an immense good for the creatures. These acts done together with the creature operate as a God does, binding God and the creature together, God to give, the creature to receive. They are like pretexts for our love that tell us the creature gave us a place in her act. She gave us the freedom to do whatever we want. So our love imposes itself on us in order to make us give what we are, and to honor ourselves as well as our own operating will. Our love reaches such pretexts and fidgets of love that it would never want us to stop giving, placing before us our endless immensity, our omnipotent power, our wisdom, that disposes all. These acts are divine. They are able to form the passport for other creatures, to let them enter the kingdom of our will. They will give a child to our kingdom, so that the more acts will be performed in our volition, the more populated our kingdom will be, and all the good will overflow to those who have been the first to give life to my will in their acts. You must know that the first passports were formed by me and by my celestial mother for the first children of my will. These passports carry my signature written with my blood and with the sufferings of the Most Holy Virgin. All other passports still need my signature, otherwise they would not be recognized. 
Therefore, one who lives in my will has my life as principal, my love as heartbeat, my works and steps has endowment, and my very will as word. I feel myself in this creature, and oh how much I love her and feel loved by my same love. And the soul feels such joy and contentment that she loves me no longer with her little love, but with my eternal love. She hugs me with my works. She runs after me with my steps. She feels that I am her life. She finds all in me and I in her. Therefore be attentive, daughter, if you want to be happy and make me happy as well. After this, I felt a little suffering and I was coughing loudly. At every fit of coughing, I asked that the divine will might come to reign upon earth. And my sweet Jesus, all tenderness, squeezed me tightly in his arms, telling me, My daughter, I knew that you would have asked for my will at every fit of your coughing, and I felt my heart being wounded, bursting of love. I felt as if I were receiving, in your coughing, my immensity, that wrapped me and asked me for my will, for my power and infinity that made everybody ask for my will to reign, to the extent that I myself was forced to say, my will come to reign, do not delay any longer. I feel such violence that I just do and say what the creature does and says. I want you to ask for my will in your sufferings, in the food you eat, in the water you drink, in the work you do, in sleep. I want you to commit your breath and heartbeat to ask that my will may come and reign. In this way, everything will be an opportunity for you to ask for my will, even the sun that fills your eyes, the wind that blows upon you, the sky that lays over your head. Everything must be an occasion for you to ask me for my will to reign in the midst of the creatures. By doing this, you will place many pledges in my hands, the first of which being the whole of your being, so that you won't even move without asking for my will to be known and desired by all. October 1914 Volume 11 Value and Effects of the Hour of the Passion I was writing the Hours of the Passion and I thought to myself, how many sacrifices in order to write these blessed Hours of the Passion, especially to put on paper certain interior acts which had passed only between me and Jesus? What reward will he give to me? Letting me hear his tender and sweet voice, Jesus told me, My daughter, as a reward for having written the hours of my passion, for each word you have written, I will give you a kiss, a soul. And I, my love, this is for me? And what will you give to those who will do them? And Jesus, if they do them together with me and with my own will, I will give them a soul for each word they will recite, because the greater or lesser effectiveness of these hour of my passion is in the greater or lesser union that they have with me. In doing them with my will, the creature hides inside my volition, and since it is my volition that is acting, I can produce all the goods I want, even through one single word, this for each time you will do them. Another time I was lamenting with Jesus because after so many sacrifices to write these hours of the Passion, very few were the souls who were doing them. And he, My daughter, do not lament. Even if there was only one, you should be happy. Wouldn't I have suffered all my Passion even to save only one soul? The same for you. One should never omit good only because few benefit from it. All the harm is for those who do not take advantage of it. Just as my passion made my humanity acquire the merit as if all were being saved, 
although not all are saved. Since my will was to save everyone and I received merit according to what I wanted, not according to the profit which creatures would have drawn, the same is for you. You will be rewarded depending on whether your will identified itself with mine, wanting to benefit all. All the evil remains to those who, although being able to, do not do it. These hours are the most precious of all, because they are nothing other than the repetition of what I did in the course of my mortal life, and what I continue to do in the most blessed sacrament. When I hear these hours of my passion, I hear my own voice, my own prayers. In that soul, I see my will, that is, wanting good for everyone and wanting to repair for all. And I feel moved to dwell in her, in order to do whatever she does within her. Oh, how I would love that even one single soul for each town did these hours of my passion. I would hear myself in every town, and my justice, greatly indignant during these times, would remain partly appeased. I add that one day I was doing the hour in which the celestial mamma gave burial to Jesus, and I followed her closely to keep her company in her bitter desolation in order to offer her my compassion. I didn't usually do this hour only sometimes, so I was debating on whether I had to do it or not. Blessed Jesus, all love, and as if he was begging me, told me, My daughter, I don't want you to neglect it. You will do it for love of me and in honor of my mamma. Know that each time you do it, my mamma feels as if she were personally repeating her life upon earth, and therefore repeating that glory and love which she gave me on earth. I too feel as if my mamma were on earth again, her maternal tenderness, her love, and all the glory that she gave me. So I will consider you as a mother. Then he hugged me, and I heard him saying to me very quietly, My mamma, mamma. And he whispered to me all that sweet mamma did and suffered in this hour and I followed her. Since then I never skipped it again, helped by his grace. End of October 31st Fiat 